complex numbers are taught to high school students all over the world and the way textbooks always introduce and motivate this topic is to say you need complex numbers in order to solve all quadratic equations you see the real numbers you can't solve some quadratic equations like this one x squared plus one equals zero uh, those uh, it doesn't have a real number solution so therefore it is necessary to introduce a new kind of number complex numbers so that we can solve all the equations that doesn't it make sense you know that's what textbooks try to tell you well in my opinion uh, this is nothing short of blatant propaganda nonsense uh, it uh, in what sense have you supposedly solved an equation by writing down for instance in this case i and negative i are the solutions so called to this equation but in what sense is this a, a constitute a solution what does it mean to solve an equation then in that way if you the only sense in which this is a solution is that if you write it down on a math test the teacher is going to give you all the points that's all it means to solve a problem in this in this sense because it doesn't serve any other credible purpose it doesn't have any independently verifiable meaning of any kind to a student the only the only purpose it serves is to uh, that it is a, uh, a dogma a doctrine that you regurgitate on a test and then you get the uh, the points and so if we teach mathematics in this ridiculous uh, stupid brainwashing fashion then what do you expect from your students that they, they will end up obviously thinking that mathematics is a rather arbitrary uh, game with with symbols and the whole point is to just write down some nonsensical string of symbols that the teacher is going to give you the points on the test in what other sense does it constitute a solution in what other sense can you possibly look at these problems when the textbook tells you you need the uh, complex numbers to solve all quadratic equations here are 50 examples of of uh, quadratic equations with complex roots now you calculate and write down the answer for each of these five plus three i is the root for that one and so on and you put a little box around it and you hand it in and the teacher gives you a gold star what is this telling you about mathematics it's telling you mathematics is a completely arbitrary game of symbols that just um, uh, the whole point is just to uh, to regurgitate uh, dogma because what other purpose do these numbers serve if i s if i write the uh, three plus five i is the solution to a certain quadratic equation uh, you know what other meaning does this have except that it's something i'm supposed to say uh, that makes the teacher happy you know it doesn't make any sense now uh, history functions in a different way history is an antidote to this kind of brainwashing if you look to history you're not going to find this uh, stupidity of uh, so-called motivation for complex numbers being the solution for quadratic equation it doesn't make any sense and that's why it didn't happen that way historically so as usual history is more sensible than modern textbooks and here then let's turn to what in fact happened historically here with the first occurrence of complex numbers are in Cardano's work Ars Magna of uh, 1545 so he faces this is a book on dealing with uh, algebra and uh, he has many useful techniques for solving algebraic equations and uh, in one instance though on in an exceptional instance he encounters a problem which uh, we would say it has complex uh, solutions only that's uh, this problem which is written here it's a combination of two a system of two equations but uh, you can uh, if it amounts to a quadratic equation right? if you solve for y in one of these equations plug it into the other you see that you obtain a quadratic equation in modern terms so it's really just uh, it's basically just a quadratic equation that that you're dealing with here in, in, in this form so uh, and the solution turn out to be then uh, complex numbers does just like it says over here and uh, which is uh, rather nonsensical and in fact that is what Cardano himself says uh, well if you if you can take roots of negative numbers you get this kind of stuff but that form of reasoning is as subtle as it is useless that is his own phrase it says right there I underlined it in his own uh, in his own text over there as subtle as it is useless so uh, that well there you have it you know what I just told you about the propaganda lies I'm telling you these kinds of solutions the so-called solution to a quadratic equation which are complex numbers are really useless and that in fact is the judgment of the inventor of these methods he himself 
calls it useless. And he's right. They are useless. So why are we teaching useless things to our students? Well, that's a question for... But in any case, uh, very useless material. Here, uh, by the way, is another phrase that is uh, interestingly occurs in the same um, a passage. This this phrase, you are dismissing... Uh, the, the standard translation here is that you're dismissing mental tortures or uh, this is a well-established translation if you if you google this idea cardano mental torture you will find um, lots of hits and everybody's referring to this work and saying oh cardano when he introduced complex number he he called it mental torture uh, is that the case so here's what the latin says then in crucciationibus is that uh does that mean mental torture now dismissing the in crucciation is that uh, uh, is he saying that you have to put aside the mental torture of working with roots of negative numbers I if you're going to solve this problem you have to put aside this, this kind of mental torture of, of dealing with roots of, of negatives um, is that uh, what he's saying uh, in fact maybe because the word uh, in crucation but it's based on the the root crux meaning cross the latin word for cross and cross the word for cross is associated with torture indeed because of crucifixion like uh, you know christ was crucified you know s and so on so the as, as were many other people so the word for cross has also uh, a secondary meaning as uh you know referring to torture so that indeed is uh, a widely used uh, way of, of, of referring to torture in la latin language is indeed to a phrase uh, which is etymologically based on the word for cross. So that would be an argument then that he is in fact talking about mental tortures here in this phrase because he's, uh, b you know, th this is the origin of that. Etymologically, it comes from this idea. However, a second interpretation would be this. He he's referring to the cross terms of multiplication. You can see here when you're multiplying x and y together to to check if whether it this is in fact a solution this x and y that i wrote here are they a solution to the original problem you have to find uh, whether x times y equals 40 in when you multiply you have to dismiss the cross terms so the cross terms of multiplication meaning where the first multiply by the second and the second multiply by the first here in this this these uh red and blue you know cross multiplications involved uh, one is the negative of the other so those cross terms go away you know the you have the blue is a positive one and the red is a negative equal magnitude so they disappear is that what cardano is saying this misses incredibly is he saying uh discarding the cross terms because they cancel each other out then uh, you know the f once you do that you you obtain the, the answer is that what he uh, is referring to uh so it could go either way really uh, is he talking about mental torture or is he talking about cross term multiplication so that's well anyway we got sidetracked from our main story here which had to do with the reason for introduction of complex numbers so at this interesting uh, passage about translation it's just a highlight how translations issues are always very uh, can can be uh, very slippery indeed although the fact that uh, the solution is useless uh, there are no two ways about that. It's certainly, he says straight, in no uncertain terms, this stuff is useless. Anyway, so back to our main story. What we were saying was, why in fact were complex numbers introduced historically? So we have concluded that they were not invented for the purpose of solving quadratic equations. Like textbook try to, to fool you with this propaganda story is in fact false. It's not the case that complex numbers solve quadratic equations in any meaningful sense. In fact, the very inventor who struck upon this idea called it useless, and it is of a good reason. So that's certainly not the reason why the complex numbers were introduced. Why then do we have complex numbers at all? Here, we have an actual reason for studying complex numbers, namely cubic equations, not quadratic, cubic, degree three, not degree two. Then it turns out that uh, complex numbers are very useful for solving cubic equations because you can 
use complex numbers as, as stepping stones, as intermediate steps when you're solving for, for a cubic equation. And ultimately, you can find an actual real solution, a real number solution. So, I mean, in this, like we were saying, uh, claiming that a complex number like 3 plus 5i somehow constitutes a solution to a, to, a, to a mathematical problem is really uh, a notion that makes no sense at all. However, if you can use those kinds of numbers as an intermediate in order to obtain a final answer, which is in fact an actual real number like 5 or 16, you know, then that's a that's an actual solution then you have actually solved something then you actually obtained an actual proper solution to a mathematical problem and then you can say these complex numbers uh, are good for something i can use them as a tool to uh, to find uh, actual meaningful solutions and you know in themselves of course they are utterly useless as solutions but as a tool you know they serve a purpose so that is, in fact, what happens. So that, that is also the reason why complex numbers were indeed accepted, because they can be used uh, for the purpose of obtaining real number solutions, not for being solutions themselves, but for leading to, to other solutions. And furthermore, uh, soon thereafter, we also have <coughs> the same kind of pattern in, uh, a in the calculus, where, again, you use complex numbers as a means to an end. Not, uh, of course, if, if an answer is a complex number, well, that, that's not good for nothing. But if, in fact, <coughs> you can uh, use complex numbers as a stepping stone towards getting an actual real number answer, then they, they prove their worth. Then complex numbers are showing that they are, meaning f they're, the, they are good for something after all. And uh, in fact, in the calculus, this, this happens in some peculiar ways. Like uh, we c you use substitution. Everybody knows like use substitution type of things. You can simplify integrals by substituting, making a change of variables. And in fact, it turns out that some integrals can be simplified by making substitutions involving complex numbers and then uh, just trusting the algebra of complex numbers uh, during uh, the steps along the way, but then by the time you get to the final answer, all the complex parts have cancelled each other out and you're left with just a real number uh, solution. So those uh, that kind of phenomenon is, uh, is the type of thing where uh, complex numbers, the type of reason why complex numbers were accepted, because they were using useful as tools toward obtaining a real answer. So we should stop fooling our students that complex numbers are themselves meaningful solutions to anything, but uh, rather as means to an end. They are justifying their existence nevertheless. This is the reason why they were accepted historically, and isn't this also the reason uh, that we should uh, explain to our students instead of telling them uh, blatant lies, such as my opinion in the case.